as we are watching and waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to fulfill his promise that he went to prepare a place and will come again and, and take us to the place he has prepared. As we're waiting for this great and glorious day, we're, I just want to uh, say this is not a prediction for a day, but this is a food for thought and some interesting considerations. Some interesting considerations about July 26th. Not to say any man, no man knows the day or the hour. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. Jesus said in such a time as you, day as you think not the Son of Man comes. But we're on the brink. And Tisha B'Av is coming up. It is interesting, dear friends, as... I actually uh, had learned this from Dr. Barry Yaw, and I'm just uh, sharing, and uh, Tyler mentioned this, and others have mentioned this, but uh, July 26th is 726, and we know that uh, 726 is the word in Strong's for rapture, and we are looking at... Tisha B'Av this year, which is the ninth of Av, is a day the Jewish people remember disaster. And we're just looking at this as Tisha B'Av. There are um, specifically four things brought out in this particular uh, website, which I will uh, uh, share with you, which I do think is interesting. Number one. In 13, 13 B.C., according to this timeline on this website, Rethinking Decisions. The Jews received frightening reports about the Promised Land. So the first Tisha B'Av, the first ninth of Av, that set the precedent for this day becoming a day of disaster was the day as recorded in Numbers, chapter 13 14, when Moses when uh, had brought the people to the Jordan and Joshua had uh, taken sent the the and and Caleb went over along with 10 other spies to spy out the land the promised land the promised land and they came back with a bad report without faith that they could go into the promised land and take the promised land, even though it was God's promise. So they refused to embrace the promise, com complained, wanted to stone Moses, ended up in staying in the wilderness for 40 years, not getting to go into the promised land until everyone that had murmured and complained and refused to go in, had died, and except Joshua and Caleb. Those two got to go in 40 years after being in the wilderness. And so that day is considered by the Jewish people, the day they refused to go in, as the ninth of Av, which this year is July 26th and as we see everything converging and as we see the significance of the number 726 we're just giving consideration here to what God is doing and we are not predicting anything because we do not know only God knows but we will say this in the same way that the Jews who came out of Egypt, refused to go into the promised land in the same way our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has come offering abundant life as the Messiah. He came to the Jew first. Jesus offered the promised land, the spiritual promised land to the Jews at the time he walked on this earth. But they rejected. Not all of them, of course. Peter and Paul, they were Jewish. All the disciples of Jesus were Jewish. 
Saul was on the road to Damascus and saw a great light and went from synagogue to synagogue and city to city to convince the Jewish people that Jesus was the Messiah. And many of them did believe and they were saved. But those that did not believe were rejecting the promised land, the spiritual promised land. And in that they rejected the spiritual promised land, when the day of rapture comes, it will be a day that those who are alive today and have not received Jesus as their Messiah, they have not received the blood that Jesus shed on Passover as the Passover lamb, even as God told Moses, kill the lamb, put the blood on the door, and Jesus died on Passover to set us free to worship God because the Pharaoh heard the word from Moses let my people go that they may worship me says the Lord and Pharaoh refused to let him go but Jesus has made a way for us to worship God by shedding holy blood to cleanse your sin and my sin and so if God chose this day the ninth of all for a day to rapture the body of Christ if he did It would be an impact upon the Jewish mind and heart that they had missed the spiritual promise of Jesus to cleanse their sin. And it would impact their hearts and cause many to turn to Christ. And that's what I expect to happen in the rapture. And I don't know if it's going to be July or August or September or October. I don't know. There's very many interesting things about September and October, dear friends. We do believe, those of us who are watching, we believe we're on the brink. Because everything is coming together. Digital ID connected to banks. Brother Chad did that video today on uh, the uh, plan to make the digital ID uh, connected to the bank accounts. And all of these things coming together, dear friends. The stage is being set as we see in the book of Revelation. So this day, the ninth of Av, became a day of disaster for the Jewish people. But just to emphasize, it starts out with them refusing to go in to the promised land. And that will be symbolically what will happen. They will pay a price at the time the trumpet blows of the rapture. They will miss they will, it will be clear that they're paying a price and missing the joy that Jesus has prepared for those who have believed. And uh, we see this day became a day of disaster. It was uh, 423 B.C. According to this uh, website, the Babylonians burned the first temple. <clears throat> and then in 1290 A.D., that is... The Jews are cast out of England. And then in 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, Spain banished the Jews. On what day? On the 9th of Av. On what day did the did Britain kick out the Jews? On the 9th of Av in 1290. On what day did the first temple burn? 423 B.C. on the 9th of Av. On what day did the Jews refuse to go into the promised land that started this day off as a day of disaster? On the 9th of Av. And so, dear friends, that's why 726 is interesting this year. Not just because, in part because it's the 9th of Av, in part because it's 726. And many of us have been, you know, see that the number 726 is an interesting number. As we have seen many, many things in regard to uh, 726. And I will let you hear a few words here from Jonathan Kahn's video, which I'll put in the description box. But here is he's talking about the ninth of all mystery. Babylon, sent into exile, thus the book of Lamentations. When did Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, destroy the temple of Jerusalem? The ninth of Av. This is the beginning. This is the event from which all the other events come. The first destruction, the first temple, and then the second temple on the exact same day. And two different armies, centuries apart, 
I mean, you got the Romans on one hand and you have the Babylonians on the other, 600 years or so apart, and yet on the exact same day. Nobody planned it. Nobody planned it at all. But in each case, you have, you have the destruction. The people are now taken into captivity. They lose their homes. They lose their possessions. And they go into exile. And so, and, and so you have all this, the beginning, and this is the thing that keeps repeating and repeating on the same day. The exile to Babylon. You know, you have all these things that are then repeated in some form. I mean, but it all goes back when they were when the Jews are expelled from Spain and, and England and France. And all, it's all a replay of their expulsion from their own home. It's like they're leaving because God, they only have really one home. And God is saying, you're still not home. And they, it's ne no matter when they try, to make, they try to make home, it's never right yet. But you've got this template. The not okay, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description box. And we're looking at July 26th being the 9th of August. This year beginning as a day of disaster, dear friends, uh, that uh, the Jews remembering July 26th this year as beginning the day of disaster. And the day of mourning for that, the day of fasting for that begins July 6th. So uh, even as we, we think about this number of 726, dear friends, I just say... You know, there's been many things for those of us who've been watching for a rapture and interested in signs and the sun, moon and stars and numbers and things like that. There's been a number of things. And I would just say concerning the number uh, 726, I just just re rehearsed some of this, you know, from the last blood moon. That is the, of the Tetrad. There was four four blood moons. The last blood moon and super blood moon to nine two three seventeen, which was the Revelation twelve sign, was seven hundred twenty six days. That is from September twenty eighth two thousand fifteen. The last blood moon of the Tetrad to September twenty third. The gap was exactly seven hundred twenty six days. Was that God's plan or was it simply a coincidence? Some felt that it, if it was a plan, then the rapture would happen on September twenty third. When the rapture did not happen. They felt like it must be coincidence. Some felt let down, but God can give a sign as a warning and then make the fulfillment at a later time. It was astounding to many to discover this. Strong's, Strong's was shouting rapture, and it was also shouting rapture connected to the great rapture sign of 92317, the Revelation 12 sign. Did that 726 come up as a plan? There was an additional confirmation which only God could make. It was discovered that Jerusalem would have exactly 726 daylight minutes on the very day of the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd, 2017, in Jerusalem. 726 daylight minutes. That was reported in a secular website that posts daylight minutes for different cities of the world. It was reported in vercalendario.info. The day length for Jerusalem on September 23rd, 2017 would be 12 hours and 6 minutes and 35 seconds. 12 hours equal to 720 minutes. And when we add 6 minutes to that, we get 726 daylight minutes in Israel. And that was the only day in all of 2017 that had 726 daylight minutes. That can be verified by an internet search on the sun in Jerusalem and, and do a do a Google search on these words, Sun, Jerusalem, September 23rd, 2017, and Ver Calendario. Other days had either more or less than 726 daylight minutes. I have checked that. No other day in 2017 had 726 daylight minutes except 923. Note that the word Harpazo, strong 726, is the very word used in Revelation 12, 5. The child was caught up to God. It was also the very word used in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18. For the Lord himself she will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage, comfort one another with these words. The signs kept coming with more and more confirmation that God was proclaiming through these signs that the rapture was his plan. It is, his, it is coming, and it is coming soon. Soon. Another blood moon came on July 27, 2018, which seemed significant. It was right over Jerusalem and the Middle East. 
So now we look at 726, and now we look at 727, which seems significant because uh, actually the 9th of Av this year begins on 62726 in the evening. It ends on 727 in the evening. So 726 and 727 are both meaningful this year in 2023. Another blood moon came on July 27, 2018, which seems significant. It was right over Jerusalem and the Middle East. It had connections to Israel. There were several other things interesting about it. It was the longest blood moon of the century with 103 minutes of totality. It was a bullseye blood moon. It ended at midnight in Jerusalem and it was on Israel's Valentine Day that is considered a very good day for weddings. It was a day that women would dance in the field and wear white robes. And how did that point to rapture? There were several ways that Strong connected that July 27th blood moon to rapture. Hence, it seemed God was continuing to proclaim that the rapture was coming and the proclamation continued to be connected to the sign on 92317. For one thing, the gap was meaningful. It was 307 days between the Revelation 12 sign on on 92317 and the blood moon on 727 2018 and Strong's Greek word number 307 is anibibazo which means to make go up or I draw up draw up as a net to the shore so that idea is very easily understood to hint at rapture because at the rapture Jesus will draw up those who belong to him number 307 I draw up as a net to the shore secondly that blood moon was 103 minutes of totality the longest blood moon of the century, and Strong's Hebrew word 103 is agar to gather, and Strong's Greek word 103 is ado to sing, and the rapture will be the gathering of the church to glory to be taken to the place Christ has prepared, John 14, then the gathered ones will be part of the marriage supper of the Lamb that will be huge banquet for the bride of Christ. They will sing glory to the Lamb and be with Him for eternity. Strong's 103 to gather and to sing. Blood moons before and after the Revelation 12 sign all proclaiming together with Strong's concordance that the rapture is coming. Jesus will appear in the clouds for his own and snatch them away. No one knows the day or the hour, but these signs are coming to indicate that it will be soon, we do believe. And the signs kept coming, dear friends. Dear friends, Jesus Christ is coming soon. I thought that was interesting, dear friends, to rehearse that. And thinking about 727, we also do say that. So, so I know uh, Brother Steve, he did all these uh, researches from this hybrid solar, solar eclipse in 2013 and the hybrid solar eclipse in 2023 and found that the days, uh, to, uh, that, that the very middle day, was uh, seven one seven two seven one seven two seven point five from those days, and it all came down basically to seven two seven, you know, as the very middle day. So that's very interesting. I say that is interesting, dear friends. Uh, in in that day, seven two seven, uh, two thousand eighteen was the day we were just reading about. It was the longest blood moon of the century. It was over Jerusalem, and it was on the day of weddings. And the midpoint is 727 days between these two hybrid solar eclipses. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. You know, only God knows for sure, dear friends, what all of this means or if it means anything. It may, Some of it could be, could be coincidence, dear friends. But I just uh, wanted to share with you, dear friends, uh, in regards to these things, that uh, why 726 is interesting. And I also say, I know Dr. Barry Oz has done some things on the... Uh, pointing to the Feast of New Wine, which honestly, I have not really studied that, and uh, his videos are so long, it's just kind of hard for me to keep focused, uh, with the, busy with other things, but many things are coming together, dear friends. You may have a day, you may have a week, you may have a month, you may have 30 days. Dear friends, you may have two months, you may have three months. Dear friends, occupy until he comes. Jesus Christ is coming soon. To take those ready out of this world and judgment is coming to this world. Wrath from God is coming upon this world. The seals of revelation are about to be opened, dear friends. And you don't want to be in this tribulation, dear friends. You don't want to be here and you don't want your friends to be here. And dear friends, you have one opportunity to be a light to lost people, dear friends. And that is while you are on this earth, dear friends. When the trumpet blows, we're going to sing and we're going to shout and we're going to dance in the streets. But one thing we're not going to do and we're not going to be a light to lost people, dear friends. And right now, dear friends, you have freedom. If you have whatever freedom you have, dear friends, proclaim Jesus Christ in the blood he shed and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the glory of Jesus Christ to the lost people. Urge them to come. Pray for them to come because God will answer your prayers 
The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Cry to God for their souls, dear friends, and love them, dear friends. You're not called to win arguments. You're called to preach the gospel. We're called to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and the hope that he offers sinners, dear friends, today and to urge them and warn them that the time to receive Christ, the time to turn to Christ, it's time now to confess sin and turn to Christ, dear friends. He offers forgiveness of sin. He offers peace. He offers the Holy Spirit as a promise to enter into that promised land in your soul. Because Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And Jesus poured out his life so that he could pour it into you. So that he could pour it into you. And Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have no hope except that Christ be in you, dear friends. You are hopeless, helpless, and have nothing in this world except that Christ be in you. And if Christ be in you, dear friends, then, then, then count this a joy. Uh, count it a treasure. Jesus, the, the word of God, Galatians 2.20 said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Pray for the pastors that they'll wake up, dear friends, and realize this is time, dear friends, to shout from the rooftops, Jesus Christ is coming soon. I heard I heard Trey Graham, praise the Lord. I heard him preaching, hey, Jesus is coming soon. But I heard a Brian Chapel on the radio saying, Jesus is coming soon. I'm saying, yes, Lord, bless them, Lord. Let them preach the word. Let them warn the people. Let them urge the people. Get excited, dear friends. If you're saved, get excited. Jesus is coming soon. And today's the day of salvation. God bless you.